Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and this is the Keep Calm and Carry Yarn podcast. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 103 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crochet podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I am recording it from Michigan. And I'm recording from Scotland. Uh, you might also know me as the publisher of Norit, the independent magazine for crocheters. And my mom is the brilliant maker behind Pearl and Plum, where she makes and sells project bags for knitters and crocheters. So yeah, thanks so much for joining us, whether you're listening on podcast app or watching along on YouTube. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, um, I have a new do for people who are watching the video. Um, I just got my hair cut and I have new glasses. I don't think I had these last time we recorded. Uh, I don't remember. I mean, I've yeah. seen them, so it's hard mm-hmm. for me to remember whether or not I saw them. I'm a completely new person. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was funny because actually um, Claudia, who does the um, Sunbird Crochet cr- podcast, and she also has a couple designs in issue two of Murit, she, um, she's also like a brilliant artist and she's can paint and draw and she was inspired by my sketching of my beach vines from the last episode and so she actually mm-hmm. did a little pencil drawing of me but I've got like my long hair and my other glasses <laughs> so now it's like a little different <laughs> oh that's cool um guess what I forgot to do put in stuff in the show notes no what did I, I, I to forgot do? I, for, I forgot to save my Oh, your BuzzFeed quiz. Okay. (laughs) Well, I'll let you take your BuzzFeed quiz because we're not going to talk about it until later. Um, And we can talk about our whips and I'll just go first while you sneaky take your quiz. Yeah. Okay. I'll sneak it. (laughs) Sneak it. (laughs) Okay. Um, So I have got one whip and it is the whip for the archive cow. So the, (coughs) sorry, the archive crochet and or knitting and crochet along that we're hosting is running until the end of May. So you still have lots of time to join in if you want to. Um, And the idea is that you make something which has been in your queue or that you've owned the pattern or you favorited it a while ago and you just haven't gotten around to making it. So I am making Meg's wrap and I kind of realized, I don't know if I've attempted to say the designer's name yet, like full name, because I don't know how to pronounce it. I was looking at it just now and I was like, oh, I don't know how to say that. Um, But it's designed by Julie Lagajevich. Um, But, you know, links and show notes and blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And anyway, am I even making that wrap? Because I've changed it so much. (laughs) It's inspired by Meg's wrap. Yeah. I like honestly haven't even looked at the pattern like since the, <laughs> I first started. Um, anyway, so this is kind of what it looked like, what the actual shawl looks like, where it's got the striped sections that kind of uh, run perpendicular to each other and then meet at the mm-hmm. corners. I think you described it like a um, a log cabin motif, like in sewing. Like, like half of a log cabin. The yeah, part. like if, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you cut it in half um, diagonally, but I've introduced these solid sections, not just the stripes. So I've got my this. This is the first finished piece. Have I showed you this yet? Yes. I, had I finished that already? So the original pattern, the triangle would be bigger. So the stripes would be wider. Stripe bands would yeah, be wider. I think the original, yeah, the original pattern. Obviously, the shawl is would be bigger on the long end than what I've got. <laughs> That's um, how she should wear it. And, <laughs> Yeah, I think the, like, each of these stripe sections are quite wide, um, although they might not all be identical. I think the last stripe section is, like, half the width as the other ones, so mm-hmm. it's a little mm-hmm. bit varied. Um, so that's the first piece. And now I've got my second piece. So you can see that. And this one's got oh, a wow. section you of got... solid uh, lilac, lavender. You got quite a bit done. Yeah, I've got, I'll I'll do three pieces in total. I went to my friend's house for his birthday um, and a bunch of us were playing board games. Before we started playing board games, I had, I brought my crochet with me because they're all crafters as well. Um, My friend, he does cross stitch and his partner knits. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, there's like, not that 
anybody would judge me for bringing my crochet along with them, but like, me. But, you know, I know that they're happy for me to just – so I was just, like, laying things on the ground. The dog was getting in the way. And I was trying to figure out, yeah, what – how – where I was going to start to square off um, because this – the one that I finished will go in the middle. And then the two ones that – well, this one and the next one will kind of fill in the gaps. And then it will need to square off at the end. Um, and I'm trying to see what is done. I don't even know. Oh god, I'm confusing myself now. I, th I think I might have confused myself and started to increase, but I think, yeah, this end is going to be uh, the end okay. of the scarf. So you got like so you'll you'll definitely finish this before our yeah. our cat cow. <laughs> I'm actually going to finish it. Yeah, I think so. I think I so. It take you a year. Well, I the mean, this thing is, is a smaller project than your sweater, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, this is just a, um, a scarf, really. Um, the only thing is, <laughs> I didn't think about. So I made the point where I sort of cut my yarn at the end of each, you know, block sec mm -hmm. se section. So I could have the same, you know, the front row, the front of the scarf be consistent for each mm -hmm. new stripe. Otherwise, you would start a stripe on a wrong side or a right side, depending on like which one where it was. And I want it. Yep. Yeah, and I always wanted it to start on her right side. And I didn't think about the fact that I'm doing this one, but oh, it's no. going to be flipped. <laughs> 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 because it needs to fit like a puzzle because it's, you know, uh -huh. the reverse triangle. So I've done it. So now actually, because I'm going to flip it on this, <laughs> on the one that I've started, you know, all the stripes start on her right side. But on this one, all the stripes start on her wrong side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I real I came to this realization at my friend's house, and they were like, "Oh no!" And Sam was just like, "You don't even know her, you guys. She's gonna she's just gonna rip it all out, and just because it's a tidy thing, she's gonna rip it all out. She's gonna start again." I was like, "Oh no, am I gonna do that?" And I decided I'm not. I'm just gonna live with it. I I think you know it, it looks different, and most people will tell. And as one of my other friends said, you know, once it's wrapped around you as a scarf, it's all mixed and jumbled, so you won't. You know, you won't yeah. really be able to tell anyway. I'm sure I, mean, I wouldn't I even know. be able to tell. Yeah, and I don't think, like, it just, I actually think possibly the stripes that start on the wrong side are a mm -hmm. little bit cleaner. Like, so that's, that's, a yeah, where the stripes begin on the wrong side. And then that's the stripes begin on the right side. Do you see that? It's like. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's a little bit cleaner. It's more just the 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 it's different like straighter. stripe colors are more more yeah more distinct. Yeah, it's straighter, but you get like as... um, you get more of the like. Wait, is this the right? yeah? So this is this is the side where the stripes are sh straighter. Mm-hmm. But you do. Oh, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. Anyway, <sighs> so I just gonna live with it. It's totally fine. And yeah, but I'm still happy. I like the colors. Um, I think it's a... I'm actually... I always feel like I have a hard time coming up with color combinations, but I'm really happy with this one. And I think it's a little bit, like, unusual. Like, it's not... Well, like, it's very you with, like, the, the navy and the... Is that navy, navy or gray? It's, it's, it's gray. It's a charcoal oh, gray, okay. a lavender, and a mustardy yellow. Like a... Well, Spicy the the English charcoal and the the mustard are definitely you, and with a little bit of a pop of the the lavender lilac. Yeah. Um, but it's it it almost reads like it's light gray. You know, it's not like so yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, it it does. Now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's my one whip. You got any whips? Okay, I have two completely new whips. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one is called the Grand Forks Pullover by Cheryl Chow. Grand and Forks? Grand Forks. Grand Forks, like the place. Grand Forks, oh. where is that? Montana, oh. Colorado, somewhere out there. I don't know. Sorry for people that are from Grand Forks or like area. forks, like eating forks, like spelled yeah. like that. Like, yeah. Like, cause, cause, cause that just makes me think of um, Twilight. Doesn't she live in? Forks, Oregon. <laughs> I don't know. You were the Forks. fan. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Uh, let me pull up a picture of the pattern. It's from an interweave 
um, Knits Magazine Winter 2018. So this could be a um, archive, archive cow, but but it's not. I'm not doing it as a. So did you own the? So did you not own the pattern before? No, no. It's I've owned it since. So this is totally an art. Why, 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 why wouldn't because you Because I'm not going to finish. I don't think I'm going to finish it. Oh. <laughs> but still. Okay, fine. We, 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 don't, we don't have strict rules with our cows. You don't That's have to true. finish it. That's true. Well, this is for my mom. Oh, nice. So it's got cream, um, a cream background with like a light brown and a little bit of a red, like a burgundy red wine red yeah uh-huh um i feel like that's very cl- like the cl- the colors look very classic yeah i mean i'm basically using the same colors that they have in the pattern um but i'm using nitpick swish um worsted because she's just gonna throw stuff in the washing machine mm-hmm. um and surprise surprise it's a color work yoke <laughs> <laughs> it's a color work circular yoke yeah so i um I just started this. I started this a couple weeks ago, but then I had to set it aside because I went to visit Emily um, last mm-hmm. week, so I didn't want to bring it to Florida with me. So I'm I'm pleased with it. It's coming mm-hmm. out very nicely. So no complaints. No, I'm just a little, I'm a little afraid that the red's gonna bleed. Oh, um, I was just thinking actually. I like how it's got the red, but because the red like there's not a lot of it, it is just like mm-hmm. a little pop. So that's the yeah. amount of color I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that. And um, my second second whip is definitely, where is it? An archive cow project. And it is Twila or Twyla by Rachel Coopy. And it's in that socks book that I got at uh, EYF, EYF in 2000. Yeah. Um, that's fun. 17? It's got like so. It's got the solid it's, toe, and then like a checkerboard pattern. Yeah, it's got it's got different um, stranded um, bands. It's like a, mm-hmm. but I'm not using those colors because I I'm only oh I can see you in my iPad. Um, mm. <laughs> <No reflection>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't do that. There's just too much reflection. Um, I'm not using these colors because I'm only using. Uh, Stash yarn? Um, stash yarn and don't have a whole lot of gray fingering weight so this is I'm just using leftover bits of knit picks stroll that I have from other projects so I'm using a white a purple and a pink mm-hmm. I thought, and right well, now, there was three colors in it I thought there was only two colors in it well there's there's a light gray there's the charcoal and there's the mustard oh, yellow see. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then this is all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Just the start of the cup. I only started it yesterday, but because, um, well, because we had to reschedule our original recording time, because mm-hmm. another appointment went long, I was able to finish a project and start this one. <laughs> oh, your your first archive cow project, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Yep. Well, before we get into that, will we do our BuzzFeed quiz? Yep. Let's do our BuzzFeed. Now, this one I picked, and it's kind of um, relative to the times now because you and Perfect, a bunch yeah. of people I know are playing Wordle. I mean, I'm I'm probably like the only person that's not playing it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. For anybody who doesn't know, Wordle, if you've been seeing uh, green and yellow squares that people are posting, it, it's yeah, it's a word game. It's Wordle, and there's there's even a a new uh, hat, a knitting pattern that that has the Wordle squares on it. Yeah, I saw somebody made like a little like amigurumi Wordle. I think it had like little eyes and arms and legs, <laughs> like a Wordle grid, but. Oh. <laughs> anyway, That's but the funny. yeah, the quiz itself is: we're going to analyze your interest and learning style to find out which daily mind game you should be playing. Except 
I don't know if daily mind game is the right, like mind game. That that makes it sound like you're playing mind games with somebody. <laughs> Bad mind games. So maybe you know? they just mean, I don't know, puzzle game. Puzzle yeah. game? Daily puzzle game? Yeah. I mean, I, I know what it means, and I think people do yeah. use that term, but it just sounds funny. <laughs> what you so get? So which one should... Oh, okay. Uh, I got Nerdle. <laughs> so it says I. you... Oh. <laughs> well, obviously, whoever wrote this didn't, like... Is, I didn't even wait. know that was a game. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, so it says, you are math whiz. You are a math whiz? <laughs> <laughs> Try guessing the mathematical equation in six tries using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Math is definitely a strong suit in life, so make sure you check out Nerdle every day for a new equation to trick your brain. I have done Nerdle before, but I don't do it on the reg. <laughs> uh, well, you definitely are more of a math whiz than I am, because I'm yeah. certainly not a math whiz, because our subscribers know that I can't even count. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even count to, to what was it that other day? Three or whatever it was. Or six. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, yeah. Well, okay. So what did you put as your favorite school subject? They didn't have art. No. So did you go for English? No, I, I put music. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so this first question tells me exactly which four options are possible math is nerdle english would be wordle or quirtle which is like wordle, wordle but you quirt quirtle because you you have to do four wordles basically at the same uh, time so you uh, guess one word one five letter word and then it fills in in all four grids but you're trying to guess four different words, so you get like dip, it'll tell you, you know, for the, the okay, top I don't even one. Want to know. I, I don't even want to know. <laughs> and then music is hurdle, and that one's like you you hear like a second of a song, and then you can try and guess. And if you don't know, then you can get like another second, and then it keeps like adding more oh. time on. Mm -hmm. And geography will be worldle, where they give you <laughs> the outline yeah, of I don't country. Play any of those games. <laughs> Um, and, but I mean, Wordle is even though it's it's with letters, it's it's more math. No, it's not. It's like a logic puzzle. Yeah, yeah, but it's still like it's still words. You know, yeah, like if you don't know words, then you're not gonna be able to. I suppose because it. it's like Mastermind, which is it's which is yeah. actually a math game. Yeah, yeah, it yeah it's it's. English mastermind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, where? What? What would be your dream spring spring break? Um, not catching up on work. I don't know who would <laughs> pick that. Um, I went for traveling the world. I did too. Mm hmm. So again, that is probably the world doll option. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm just gonna, oh, what about your, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, travel blogger. Mm. Another world -o answer. Uh -huh. I put author because I feel like when I was younger, I liked the idea of being an author. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to skip a few. Food, food. What's your favorite food? Pasta, tacos, pizza, sushi. I, I, I had a hard this. time with this. You know, I always have a hard time with food because like, oh, they yeah. all look good. And the pasta, it looks like fresh pasta. Yeah. There's, there isn't even any sauce on it yet. And I'm like, mmm, pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I ended up because I was, I was craving sushi last night. So I picked sushi. Mm. I think out of all of them, pizza is my, would be my last choice but i went for pasta mm -hmm. this time around mm -hmm. but i could easily have gone for tacos or sushi depending on on my on the mood. mood yeah yeah um what about i'm just gonna skip to which best describes your style minimal bold chic or casual casual yeah same i'm trying to decide maybe minimal is nerdle Mm, yep that's as far as I so got. so why did i get nerdle then <laughs> because i picked all the ones that you did that's why except for the math the math 
in the beginning. Yeah. No, okay. different food. We had different food, different things we wanted to be. When we grew- yeah, I don't know. You must yeah. have just picked other things that were nerdily. Um, but it, what I will say is, I'm not very good at like music because I've never been a big music person. I feel like our whole family is a bit like that. Like we'll listen to music, but we're not like into music. We're like into bands. Uh-huh. Um, but there's been a few days where Sam has been playing Hurdle. And I'm like, oh, I know this after a second. And it's because of, like, you. So there was um, Ace of Bass. Um, I was like, oh, I know it. I was like, immediately. I knew what it was. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, yeah, but because I told him I knew what it was, that kind of gave him a hint because he knows what's, like, music and what songs and which artists I do uh-huh. know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know it, then you really know it. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I've never heard of Hurdle or... yeah. Myrtle, not Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle or Nerdle, wor- Wordle, 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 <laughs> Hurdle, Quirtle. There's a Harry I'm, Potter one. Uh, yeah, I'm just not in the in the in crowd. Maybe maybe I should do the Harry Potter one. What's the Harry Potter one? It's I mean it's it's basically it's Wordle, but uh-huh. only five letter words that appear in Harry Potter. I think. Oh. So it could be like not real wor- words because so the first uh, time I played I it. The word was grop. Grop. G R A W P. G R A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Hagrid's brother. Right. Brother. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Fos. I'm wearing my. Yeah, I saw that. I'm wearing my Winston cardigan. Winston. Well done. Uh-huh. I think I could have um, made the sleeves a little bit shorter. Uh huh. Because. I don't actually wear it like, because because when I was measuring out how how to make the you know the sleeve cuff part, um, I had the the edge of the stripes end at my elbow, so it doesn't uh-huh. actually go down to my elbow when I'm when I'm relaxed. Like yeah, if I'm pulling because... it like this way, it goes to my elbow. But usually uh-huh. it, it it'll droop down. Yeah. Yeah, because so... it's like an open cardigan. So. Yeah, but which is fine because then I can go like this and cover my hands. So Cozy my hands. hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I do I, like I like the darker sleeve as well. Yeah. So oh, I'll get up. Let me do the back. Mhm. Yeah. Good. But yeah, I I um, I mentioned last time that if I were to do it again, I would definitely make the 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 ribbing along the edge of the sweater uh, wider. Or longer, mm-hmm. or however, uh, because it does have a tendency to curl in when I'm mm-hmm. walking around or moving around. So if if it was wider, I feel like it wouldn't do that as much. Maybe yeah. I don't know. It does, it, does, it is very fuzzy because it's got the. Does it have um mohair in it or something? I can't remember. It's got cashmere in it, and soft. merino, so it's super super soft. Nice. And, and warm. Ten percent cashmere, eighty percent wool. Oh, okay. What's the other ten percent? The knit picks capetta. Um, see, you're good at math. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> nylon. Oh, okay. I can't. Yeah. It's. Yeah, I'm. I'm super happy with it. Yeah, it's really nice. I feel like it's. It's not a. A design. A pattern that. I would have thought you would have gravitated towards. Why? Because it's I don't know. You? Just maybe, or I don't know. Just yeah. Just wanted you know something. I like I can it. Throw no. on, you know, mm-hmm. something comfy. Though I haven't wearing been wearing it around the house that much because cats. I did wear or, it or out. Claws. Yeah, because yeah. you know. Because your well, cat is all over you all the time. Sushi was like I was sitting. After I tried it on when I was done, and I was sitting it, and, and part of it, part the end of the sweater or the bottom of the sweater was on my lap, and she came over and she started kneading like right there, I was like no, not the sweater. <laughs> oh, get your claws away from my sweater. <laughs> uh, so and then, oh, I guess I have three FOs. Uh huh. Um. I finished my mittens, Mm -hmm. and I finished them 
in Florida last week while I was there. I, and I did tear tear the 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 thumb out, the t t t the the tums the, the tums. Yeah. I tore tore uh -huh. the first one out. Oh, well, I I made the second one short, you know, after seeing how the first one along the other. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then um, after I was done with the second mitten, I tore out the. I just cut it because I was like I couldn't even tell where, so I just cut. <gasps> like the tip off and like just you just cut off. like you cut the mitten well i mean i cut it like right at the tip and then i pulled uh -huh. it down to where i knew i wanted to start uh -huh. the the color the whatever the decreases over again lower mm -hmm. hmm. yeah i'm sure these will be nice and warm there's lots of room nice. in the in the in the in the fingers part the it's still a little bit on the short side up here but maybe I'm just used mm -hmm. to wearing things that are super big I'm not using used to my finger touching the top it's supposed yeah, to be like, like this fitting maybe. properly yeah um so is there like a little snowflake on the th on the thumb tips as well yeah there's a tiny little a snowflake one. yeah on the on the thumbs uh-huh <laughs> And then on the on the hand part, on the finger part. So which so you, I'm just looking at the show the the notes. You used the nitpicks bare. Uh, what, for, is that the for white the, for the white? Yeah. Mm, and that's merino and silk and the fiber company Cumbria. So I was looking at that that was the one that interested me because it's sixty percent merino, thirty percent masham, ten percent yeah. mohair. Mm. And masham. But they both they have own. mohair in it. Yeah. Nice. That's what, well. That's why I picked this particular mm -hmm. nitpicks I had lying around. Um, and then, then my final fo. Wait, this no. What? Th oh, is is what? that? Oh, I what? see. What? In the show notes, it says nitpicks bear is merino silk. Was that the? Oh, first you're right. Yarn you're right. You're right, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm thinking about the other one. Because you had to change the yarn because you used the wrong size yarn. Yeah. At first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have another FO? Is that what you said? Yeah, I started it um, the day before we were supposed to record it, and I finished it the day after we were supposed to record. <laughs> so it was only like a one and a half day project. I still have to make a pom pom. I made a hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. cute. Uh huh. So um, what's the this is called the. Um, Zigzag Wings by Justina Lorkowska. Mm -hmm. um, hmm, where is it? And it is the same designer that designed your your tied knots, the light blue hat that I made for you. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's there's two different um, versions. Ha yeah, two of it, they're different versions, two of it, different charts. And I saw one, the, the, the way I did it is a little bit different from the chart where I have three, di four different colors rather than just two. Um, I mm. saw somebody's project on Ravelry and really liked the way it looked. Actually, it was on the, it was on the, pro the pattern page. It just, it doesn't oh, show up in the pattern. Yeah. 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 Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, here, here we go. So, she's got the little the little points in different colors, and then the brim, mm -hmm. um, the brim has was cast on with one of the coordinating colors rather than the um, the color of the body. Mm -hmm. So that I I kind of did the same. Oh, thing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Except my my colors aren't as bright. So this is basically a a stranded color work. Um, hat and she's mm -hmm. got twisted ribs on the on the brim which I've been doing a lot of lately where mm -hmm. the the knit the knit stitches really pop out I think so what white hat is, well it's a it's Greek. an off-white it's a natural undyed uh -huh. with what um, color is the like the little like wings the wings are um a yellow it's a soft yellow and these are all uh -huh. leftovers from other things and then I've got a bit of pink, Blue not pink, pink, purple, and then a little oh. bit of um, like uh, aquamarine. 
Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Just, it, yeah, it's kind of like chevron-y. A little bit like chevron Yeah, a little bit. And then the other option is actually a, sh- a chevron. The, the other chart is a chevron. Mm-hmm. So this will probably go into the hat box for future gift. And then I'm going to make up, I think, a, a yellow pom-pom. Either yellow uh-huh. pom-pom yeah. or the purple pom-pom because the edge is done in purple. Hmm. I think a yellow pom-pom. That's okay. my vote. Okay. I have plenty of yellow. I mean, I have plenty uh-huh. of all the colors. Um, I made a, a baby sweater out of the, this yellow. Mm-hmm. So it's the leftovers. Oh, you know what? I did forget to mention when I was working on my Grand Forks, I did the whole, I did the, the <laughs> my gauge in two different um, needle size. Uh-huh. And then I f- forgot to mark which side was which. <laughs> <laughs> but could you tell, like, presumably, yeah, yeah. I, it was hard was... to tell before I blocked it. But then after I soaked, you know, I washed and blocked it, you can definitely tell, like, oh, yeah, this side is bigger. So this must be the smaller needle. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's barely smaller. Yeah. Um, what are you gonna do with that tube now? I feel like you could like have like with a this? wrist warmer. I could, but only one. Yeah. Well, then the next time you do a double sided thingy, just make it the same same ish size, and then you have two mismatching ones. <laughs> well, I mean, when I do uh, my color work, a gauge swatch, I do tend to do them in tubes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tube. It's a Barbie sleeping bag. A Barbie sleeping bag? Yeah, I guess it's we're, too we're tall. Two, Barbies. <laughs> two Barbies. Yeah, but yeah, then it, would, it would only cover, like, their legs. <laughs> or just their chest. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Um, that is all the fibery goodness I have this time around. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've got a couple FOs. Well, one of them's not a crocheting FO. One of them is a sewing FO. And it's not even that exciting, but I was just really happy with them. I made some napkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so I did, like, I bought some, like, cotton waffle fabric. Uh-huh. Um, like, toweling. So I made table napkins, six of them, for when we f- are feeling fancy. Um, and those are in, like, a... A light puce. <laughs> oh, that's um, um, cool. <laughs> And then I also made some like, um, like cleaning cloths that we use in like the kitchen and stuff. And I bought some cute fabric. This is, I think, this is Ruby Star Society. And it's got little abstract squiggles. What did you did you line a bag with that? Or no, I, I bought the fabric specially. Oh, <laughs> for the napkins. Um. So yeah, I bought. I think I bought the most of this one with the sort of peach and yellow and blue, um, like they're kind of like brushworks, um, brush strokes. Um, so I did a bunch of them. They've got like different colors on the back, and then I got some this mango lemonade, as the fabrics called, some art gallery fabrics, and then this one terracotta markings. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Now I got a bunch of little cleaning cloths, and I think I'm gonna. Because you have lots as well, and you have like different baskets for like clean ones, dirty ones, and so I think I'm gonna steal that idea and go out and try and find a basket. Um, because at the moment when they're dirty, we just put them on the floor in the kitchen in the corner, well, right in front of the dishwasher, uh, not dishwasher, the um, the washing machine. Uh-huh. So that's my first FO, small one, and my second one is completely random is a hat. Oh, I made How a bucket cute is hat. That? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I I don't really know why I decided to make this. It's designed by Jeanette, um, who is Air Crochet, and she also designed the cover, um, garment of Murit Issue 2, the, the white long sleeve top. Mm -hmm. And I just really, like, basically love 
anything she makes. Sorry? It's hard to tell in the screen I'm looking at. Is that two colors? It's two colors. Um, so it's called the Good Vibrations Hat. Um, and yeah, so I've done it in cotton, just some like random cotton that I had. And I didn't actually have enough to finish it. I think I'm short a few rows. And then like also there's like a, a tidier finishing row as well. Um, so yeah, so it's done in two colors. Um, so I've got it in white is the main color and a gray as the second color. And so it's done with spike stitches. So the gray, the white is spike stitches and then the gray kind of peeks out. Behind you know, it's funny. I, I, I ran across a, uh, an article on, on the interwebs talking about crochet in high fashion these days and then uh -huh, or, uh -huh. or just and then and then and then of course like you there's another article about um you know holly hollywood a-listers wearing like different crochet stuff in a bucket hat a crocheted bucket hat was definitely one of the pictures <laughs> i can't remember which hollywood a-lister was wearing the crocheted bucket hat but some mm -hmm. of the things i was looking at it's like i'm not sure if that's crochet or knitting because it's yeah, hard to yeah. tell when it's far away yeah yeah yeah, I like that hat, except I would want a bigger brim. Yeah, so she, I mean, she is an amazing designer. And, like, I just love, she just has, like, various, like, small techniques, like, slight different variations to make it a little cleaner, a little tidier, or, you know, whatever. And um, one of the things she does, which um, I have done before in another pattern is for the joins because obviously so this is done um not this is done like as a spiral sort like sort of as a spiral but you instead of slip stitching at the end of the round you have to kind of like take out your hook from the loop and then reinsert your hook from the wrong side to the right side and then recatch the loop and then pull it through. And you can see where the join is, like so it's on the back of the hat. Yeah. Um, this almost sort of like a little jog, but it, it is, I think, a little bit cleaner than your the traditional sort of slip stitch at the end of end of a round. Um and she also gives option for a regular brim and a wide brim. I don't actually think it's wider in terms of like the length, but it go like there's more increases so this is the standard one and it kind of goes down more as opposed to out so i think the wider brim has more increases or the increases come out come sooner so it goes out more um but yeah i i don't know i'm not really a hat person so i don't know if i'll, I'll actually wear it much i thought maybe madeline might like it um and i don't think I mean, you always used to tell me I had a big head, so I don't think her head's any bigger than mine because apparently I have the biggest head. <laughs> um, uh, well, it was but... like rel it's relative, like because you're the oldest, and then like when when I brought Emily home from the hospital, <laughs> and you were you were two and a half, and she was a newborn. I was like, oh my god, look how big Alice's head was. <laughs> And of course, your head was always bigger than hers when you were very little. Uh -huh. um, it's just, you know, one of those. <laughs> mm. uh, we just like uh, to tease well. you about it. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, I finished the hat. And I think, so I basically, I bought this pattern on a whim because she also published a sweater pattern, the Coast sweater, which I really, really want to make. Um, and I was putting that in my cart and then I saw the hat and I was like, oh, that's cute. I'll put that in my cart too. Um the one thing I will say, which I think I might actually mention to her, but because she's she's Danish, so she publishes her patents in Danish first, and then some most of them I think have English versions. So it's in English, and they're centimeters and inches, and it took me so long to realize I couldn't understand her like a lot of the inches measurements when I was trying to figure out what um what size coast sweater I wanted to make. Like, this doesn't make any sense there's too many numbers like and i realized she'd done it in feet and inches oh so it's like you know your bust you have a two foot three and a quarter inch bust <laughs> <laughs> and so because i i just wasn't expecting that so when i was looking at it i'm like i don't understand is this like some other 
third system of measurement that I've never heard of. And like, I feel like I was just being stupid because she did use the, you know, single um, apostrophe for feet. So it made sense. Um, and so I think that's just a sort of loss in translation moment because obviously she would just use um, centimeters. Um, so that's my top tip for anybody who is using any of her patterns and prefers inches. And what is what is her way. whole name again? <sighs> Jeanette Bogland Benson. I don't know. That's probably not how you pronounce it. The O in her in the the Bogland has one of those slashes through it. So I'm, but she's everywhere as air crochet. Um, okay. So, as in, like, air. <laughs> like, like. I was thinking airbenders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So that those are my FOs. <laughs> oh, so I didn't. I didn't expect you to have any FOs. I know. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> uh, nice job. And actually, do you know what? I did something stupid as well because, um, the way that the the top is just a flat circle, and. Um, because she thinks about things like that. She wanted it to be a circle as opposed to, you know, sometimes you get as a, like a hexagon um, when you ink, because if you do all your increases in the same spot. So she kind of jogs them a- along. And I thought I had done it, but I was still getting sort of a hexagon shape. I was like, I don't understand. And then I realized it was because I was making like one side of the hexagon one stitch bigger than the other side. So I wasn't actually like jogging it along one stitch. I just I just did it wrong. But it is funny, like, I was looking at it and you can still kind of detect, I don't know if you can see, a sort of spiral pattern, like a sort of spi- like a star or a flower. Um, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it is cool. It's, it looks like a, yeah, it looks definitely looks like a star. I mean, it's like my hat, you can see the decreases and it mm-hmm. makes like a swirl on top. Yeah. And then if you, because it's doing... You're only doing one-sided decreases, but if you're doing two-sided ones, like paired, then it's more like wedges, like like um, um, like you know a ball, like you know when when you see a one of those a ba- a basketball that has like the wedges. Mm-hmm. I don't think it has wedges exactly, but it does maybe something does, does. something <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So it either looks like kind of like a star, or it looks like wedges, or a hexagon, or octagon, or whatever, depending yeah, on yeah. how you uh, do the decreases. And I like that other people do the math for me, so I don't have to figure it out. Yeah. Do you have any yarny bits and bobs? Because I do. <laughs> I've done nothing um, yarny. Um, yeah. What what is your yarny bit and bob? Oh wait, do you have any more update before you go on move on to? Um yeah, so I kind of put it out there on social media and on um to like newsletter subscribers about the new publication date for Murray issue two is the twenty first of April, which is a Thursday. I've already sent all my orders to stockists. I've already started sending out some of the international orders. So, and then the UK orders will go out in advance of the 21st as well. And then orders will open back up on the 21st and you'll be able to access um, digital your digital downloads instantly from the 21st as well. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, if you didn't nab one during the pre-order um, period and you think you might forget to grab one on the 21st i do now have a feature on the website where you can put in your email to get a alert when it go- goes back on sale so you can do that now good that's my update okay that's a good update yeah um and then for yarny bits and bobs i went to perth last weekend for um so the perth festival of yarn which normally runs in september or it runs in september uh, have done a new event in the spring. I guess it's kind of the spring. Yeah, it's the spring now. Um, the Scottish Wool Producer Showcase. Uh, so, yeah, I went up, took the train up, which is about an hour and a half train, um, and, yeah, went to that. And so the idea is that it is sort of, there's lots of, like, um, farmers there who, you know, um, have their own sheep's fleeces spun. Um, and it was it was a really small like a very small event, um, very intimate, 
Um, and I was speaking to the organizer and she was talking about how, you know, those sorts of vendors can sometimes get lost in the shuffle at like bigger events where you've got all like the flash of the indie dyers and all the colors and, you know, um, so yeah, I went, um, and I bought some yarn. So I bought some Lamamere wool, Simply Shetland double knitting. Um, so yeah, that's a, a DK slash worsted um, yarn. And so the woman from Lamamere actually did a talk, which I attended. And so she was just talking about, um, about the sheep, about the different colors. And so she was talking about breeding their sheep color to color to try and maintain those colors. Um, she said, even though that sounds a bit funny, but yes, yeah, so they'll, they'll breed, you know, the, the brown sheeps, the murit sheeps together with murit sheeps to try and get more sheep that are that color. And, and she was just talking about the the differences between the different color sheep and how actually their wool is, like quality is different. Mm. Um, and that at the moment it's their white sheep that have the best quality wool, but they're working towards trying to get like the black fleeces and the murit fleeces to be of the same. Um and yeah, it was, it was just it was just really interesting. Um, and yeah, so I bought this one. It's like um, I think it must be a mix of maybe the blacks and browns. It's sort of a a very warm dark gray, almost like a brown gray. Uh, but I lost a hat that I crocheted, and it was one of my favorite hats. Which so hat? I there. The win hat. Um, it had this sort of like texture it had a rib it was gray and it had like the sort of bubble textures like that uh, okay um but it was one of my favorite like me made hats because the other hat i wear a lot is the hat that you mentioned before the blue one um so so yeah i went to the show specifically looking for some yarn to to remake that hat which i'm planning on doing if i can finish this scarf in time it'll count as an archive cowl project because I had originally favorited that hat a few years ago. The other yarn I bought was from Anfield Farm and they have a flock of mohair, not mohair, angora goats. So this is, so yeah, this is, um, I think it's 50% mohair um, and then 50% um, other wool from neighboring um, farms. Um, yeah, so it's just in a natural sort of color. They also had, I think they had some sort of like dorset something, but I, what I liked about this, because I, I think with a lot of white yarns from farms, they're very like creamy yellow, but this is sort of more gray white instead of like. Were there any babies? Yellow. Babies? Lambs? Not at the show, but. So th this Anfield Farm, um, I think they're in Fife. Yeah, they're in Fife. The, it's run by a couple. And yeah, I spoke to them before I went to the talk. And then after I went to the talk, the, um, there was only one of them because they had had um, a baby, had just been born like half an hour beforehand. So she had to rush off back to the farm. Um, and so, yeah, we got to see a picture of the just born little goat. And like yeah, their ears are so floppy, so cute. Um, so it wasn't but... like there wasn't like a petting zoo attached. No, no, no. It was it was the the show was um in the station hotel like right outside of Perth train station, um, and actually both of both of these um farms are not that far from me because yeah, Fife is just across the four the fourth. The Firth of Forth? Yeah, it's the Firth of Forth because it's, it's, a, the Firth is a type of body of water. So it's, they're all Firths and this one's called Forth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's across the Firth, a Forth. <laughs> um, and then this one is, I think, it's got an EH postcode. So I think it's in the borders, maybe, like south of Edinburgh. Um... Oh yeah, I think they're in East Lothian. And then I also got a oh, party bag. Oh, you a got woolly, you got a woolly original. I got original. a woolly originals. I know you got one um, when you were in Edinburgh. Um, so 
yeah, in case anybody doesn't know, Wooly Originals, um, they are machine knit. Um, I saw that on Instagram. It's the bottles. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's, it's machine knit um, outside fabrics. And then I think she's a Scottish linen on the inside. So they're pro- zippered project bags. And uh, but she, she does them in different sizes. Um, and they're and antique like, yeah, machines that she uses. Sorry? But like vintage antique machines that she uses. Oh, yeah, like- yeah. Um, and, and nice yarns. Like, so this one, it says um, the colors are from rye and ripples crafts which i think is maybe two different i don't know if that's just the name of the yarn dyer um but yeah this is this design is called gin bottles because it's uh based on a variety of shapes of scottish gin so yeah she posted it on instagram and i saw it and i commented because the the picture that she had taken of this bag with like a selection of gin bottles one of them was a little mini bottle of lin gin and somebody who I used to work with, her parents, like, they started Linjin while we were working together. Um, so I've had Linjin before, and I was like, oh. And I think I know, I think they've, they've had a redesign, so their bottles don't look like what the, what the, was in the Instagram photo. But I think it looks <coughs> maybe like this one that has the rounded shoulders is kind of inspired by that one, maybe. Because, um, yeah, that bottle used to have, like, the spout, and then it kind of angled like out. Um, oh, yeah, I, I still little, have the little, the little cardboard tag that it comes with. I still have it tucked inside my bag. <coughs> what the the woolly originals tag? Yeah, because it has like what what yarn and you know, mm. it has a little explanation. So yeah. I still yeah. have mine, and I use it uh, every day. You use it every day, so it's good. Well, yeah, because I have all my notions. How big of a bag did you get? Not as big as that. Mm. Yeah. Well, she said this was the only gin one that she had that day. So I didn't buy it when I first went to the stand. <coughs> Sorry, I've got... I think I've got wool in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Yeah, so I didn't buy it on my first round. And then one of the one of the women that I was with, she had bought a bag... And she was pulling it out to show me which one she bought. I was like, oh, my God, she better not have bought the gin bottle one because that's the only one <laughs> she had. So, <laughs> um, Will she yeah, be in birth another... again in the fall? Uh, I don't know. Um, but <sighs> oh, yeah, there was another woman who was helping out at the Woolly Original stand and she was wearing a high wire sweater that she had made. Oh. Which was the one of the designs from Mura issue one that's got like the zigzags on it. So her version, she had done a sort of three quarter length sleeve and it was in a really like bright um, aquamarine blue with a kind of off white zigzag. And it was, yeah, it was really, really nice. And I totally didn't clock it to begin with, I think, because she was kind so of. So you didn't take height. a picture? I didn't take a picture, no. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think she did though. Um, so I, 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 I yeah, she probably post it to stories. Um, uh-huh. But. Yeah, I didn't clock it to begin with, and it was only like I was close. I was close to leaving the show. I got a text from somebody who I had seen there, and she was just saying like, "Oh, sorry, didn't get to chat more. Did you see somebody who's wearing your one of your designs? You know, and and she tagged them, and I was like, "What? No!" So I did like go to the inst- her Instagram account, and then that's how I realized that she was helping out Wooly Originals. I turned around, I was like, "Oh my god, that's Highwire! It's not my design per se, but you know, the magazine's design." Um, so that was really cool because that was the first time I'd seen a somebody else wild. made Murit design in the wild. Yeah. Wow. So she, I guess she didn't recognize you then. Is your picture no, in the I'm magazine not. at all? It's not, is it? You didn't. My picture's life? not in the magazine. No, I'm a little bit on like in reels and stories and stuff. Um, but when I came back over, I mean, we're all wearing masks as well. I came back over and I was like, "Is that a high wire sweater?" Even though I knew it was, and she was like, "Yeah." And I, and I said, oh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, you know, I publish more. And, and then they were like, oh, my gosh, Allison. I was like, yeah, that's me. Um, so, yeah, that's the one thing, because I was being introduced to people. But when everybody's wearing masks, it's like, you know, I could pass you on the street in an hour and not recognize you because you're not wearing your mask. Yeah, um, that's a good point. I forgot about mm-hmm. that. Cause yeah. <laughs> it's 
not as common here. Oh, uh, yeah. No, everybody was wearing masks at the show. So, um, yeah, so that's my, my yarn. You get some bobs. Oh, that sounds great. I can't mm-hmm. wait to go to a, a yarn show. <laughs> <laughs> Any yarn show will do. Oh, actually, there's a small one here this Saturday. Mm-hmm. Are you going? I'm going to go, yeah, I think. Yeah. Where are we going to go? I can't I can't remember what it's called. Oh. Um but it's I think it's Is it in Ann Arbor? It's in the county fairgrounds. Okay. I think. I have to look it up again. It was in the newsletter, the the spun news, newsletter and then uh. and then Kathy, the woman that I met at at spun a few weeks ago that we knit mm-hmm. with, she sent me a link too. So I was like, "Oh, I'll be home." Um yeah, yeah. So I'll try to go. Oh, nice. Well, then you'll have some things to talk about for Yarny Bits and Bobs. Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's all we have, right? Um, Yeah. yeah. I don't have any any other news Mm -hmm. because I've been traveling. Well, it was a good timing because for the video, I don't know if you can see, but there's like light streaming through now. Yeah. Um, So when when you move your head, it's not there, but when you... uh, case <laughs> <laughs> okay right so you can find the show notes for this episode and every episode on our website uh which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com you can follow us on instagram also at kcacypodcast you can follow me specifically i'm allison here and my mom is upstate underscore viv you can join the Ravelry group. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry On Podcast. We've also got the Archive Cal thread in there. Or if you're not on Ravelry anymore, then you can also participate in the Archive Cal on Instagram. Just use hashtag ArchiveCal2022. And I just realized something. It's like cut, cut out of the spiel again. I just wanted to mention that there is another podcast who's hosting an Archive Cal, and they're using hashtag archive 2022 i think which is totally cool and just to let you know um if you're using that hashtag but you want to participate in our archive cow make sure to use our hashtag as well double dipping is totally fine and encouraged actually this is excellent timing because now you can participate in both um but just so people know because i think there's definitely people who i know are participating in our cow but who are also participating in that cow but aren't using our hashtag anyway complicated (laughs) back to the spiel uh (laughs) make sure to subscribe like comment favorite review thumbs up all the things on youtube itunes or wherever else you listen to podcasts so thank you for listening and remember to keep calm and carry yarn bye bye